We are given a chip or a module here. It has got one, two, three, four inputs and one output, and it's described by a collection of logic gates. There's no feedback loop anywhere, so this represents a combinational logic circuit. We want to implement this in Verilog, and because we're given the explicit gates here, then we can do this using Boolean algebra. Moreover, if we wanted to debug this circuit, we might want to be able to see the voltages at each of these internal junctions as well. So the way we can do that is that we can assign a name to each of these internal junctions, and by using that name in Verilog, when we come to simulate our code, we can actually ask ModelSim to display the waveforms, not only at the input and the output, but also at the intermediate locations in this circuit. The first thing we do is we give every junction a name, including the inputs and the outputs. The inputs and outputs are normally labelled with sensible names, but here we're just going to use A, B, C, D and E for the inputs and outputs. Now we need to label the internal junctions so that we can display them, and also so that we're very careful in constructing this circuit. Of course, we can take shortcuts in the very log code and just use a single assign statement, but slow and steady wins the race. So the internal junctions are here, 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 and here, and we can call them X, Y, Z, and T for simplicity. We are now ready to do some coding. We start off with our module declaration, and please ignore the capital N that the iPad automatically creates. Now we need to give this chip a name, not an instance name when we're using it, but we need to describe the type of the chip. So is this chip, for example, a counter, or is it a BCD to seven segment encoder? Well, this is a, a prototype chip that we've designed ourselves, so it's hard to think of a sensible name in this toy example. I'll just call it a type X chip for a prototype. And now I need to define all the pins on the outside of this chip. So I have input A, B, C and D and output E. Written like this, A to E, they are all just one bit wires. They're all just a single wire carrying a single bit of information, either a logic zero or a logic one. In the module definition itself, the first thing I do is I define my internal junctions or wires, which are X, Y, Z, and T. Now, all I need to do is use the assign statement, which is a continuous assignment. So if I do assign X equals, and I see that X is the output of a, what's that, a NAND gate with A and B as the inputs. So a NAND gate is not an AND gate. So A and B is an AND gate, and the not out the front makes it an AND gate. And this is a continuous assignment. So what that means is that you've asked your friend to continuously monitor the values of A and B, and as soon as either A or B change, then X, this, this expression on the left-hand side gets, sorry, the expression on the right-hand side gets evaluated and it gets assigned to X. So in other words, X is always going to be the result of, a, a, of putting A and B into a NAND gate and the output will be X. That's what assign means. We do the same thing for all our other junctions. So Y is going to be equal to, that looks like a NOR gate. So C or D with a not out the front makes it a NOR gate. Z is equal to, that looks like an exclusive OR gate, so A exclusive OR with X. 
and assign t equals that looks like an AND gate, so that would be Y AND D. And finally, assign E equals Z or T. And since we're done, we have end module. And again, no capital E. One final thing to emphasize, even though we wrote this like we would in a C program that would compute the same thing, the order of these assigned statements does not matter because this is not going to be executed like C code. Remember, each assigned statement means that you get a friend to look at the right-hand side, and as soon as anything on the right-hand side changes, then the right-hand side gets re-evaluated and assigned to the left-hand side. So the order doesn't matter. Just like if you're building this circuit, it doesn't matter the order in which you solder these logic gates onto the circuit board. This is describing how we wire up the logic gates, how we solder them into our circuit. So the order does not matter. Once they're in there, they are connected up and the voltages flow through them just as in this diagram. The order does not matter. To conclude, the most basic way of describing a combinational logic circuit in Verilog is by using Boolean algebra in here. We can combine statements onto one line. It would have been possible to write this using a single assigned statement, using brackets and whatnot to get a single expression here. By writing it out this way, firstly, it's a bit safer, less chance we've made a mistake. Secondly, it's easier for someone to read this and draw the diagram here, should they ever want to. And finally, as mentioned at the start, when we simulate this code using model sim, we're actually able to examine the values of x, y, z, and t, and therefore see the waveforms at these internal points, which might be useful for debugging.